Hi students, again, uh, today we are going to be looking at um, the kind of the really fun part about Mathematica and the useful part about Mathematica, which is importing data into Mathematica, analyzing that data, plotting that data, uh, doing uncertainty analysis, producing really nice plots for figures, uh, for publications, uh, and all that other good stuff. So this is the kind of the really useful thing and how to kind of utilize Mathematica as a tool as you go into industry or academia or wherever. So. Um, one of the beautiful things about Mathematica is it's fairly easy and straightforward to import. So we'll go to our help menu again. We go to our import function. So import. I can't type. <laughs> so import. You can import all these different types of essentially data files. Uh, so it's really, really nice. Uh, you can kind of play use. You can do GIFs. You can do images, Excel files. Um, there's lots and lots and really kind of almost no limit to what you can kind of grab. Um, and analyze in Mathematica. So, I want to look back at some data that was gathered uh, in Engine 45 in Spring 2020. So, specifically, I want to first look at a uh, data set where we did, uh, we looked at the corrosion data from iron, uh, and it's in this LMV file format. So, all I have to do, control copy, or control C, um, you can kind of drag and click into it, uh, into your Mathematica notebook. There's lots of different ways. But, so I want to look at the raw data FE. So raw data from my file. Import. I'm going to control D. Copy that. My path again, the specific in my computer. I'm going to analyze this as data. And that's it. Close it. And you can see, okay, so this file is an MV file. It's from a lab view measurement. Uh, let's look at it in our data FE in some table form. So you can see a lot of kind of header in here. And then finally, we get to basically this file where we have voltage here. You know, I know that's from the details of the experiment. It doesn't stay explicit here, but you know that's what you need to remember and write down. That's why you have a, basically a lab notebook. And this is the value in time, in seconds. So we want to be able to grab this data and make this data useful. So this is too much to kind of see and look at. So I'm just going to delete this here. So I just want to look at a section of this data. So I'm going to do our data fee. I'm going to grab it one to and we'll look at it in table form. So I still have my header here. So that's not really useful. So let's look at it from 20. All right, I'm getting down. So now I can see I have basically one, two, three extra lines of code. So let's grab from 23 to 50. Now I've got my data where I can work with it. So now I don't want to stop at 50. I just want to go to the end of my list. So here is my nice data set from time and then my essentially the voltage data that I'm gathering here. So that's how you kind of want to work at and clean up uh, and basically have this data in a useful format. So I am going to take this guy. I'm going to rename it as my data FE. So my clean data, you can kind of, you know, name it whatever you want. And now I can kind of look at how to say a little bit. So this line plot. Data FE. So the voltage is function of time. There looks like a little bit of drift, but again, we can change this plot range. So I'm going to go from 0 to 10 seconds. And then realistically, I'm going to go from 0 to, let's say, like 1 volt, uh, for example. That data is pretty flat. Again, you would always, <laughs> again, this is probably the resolution of your experiment. You can kind of look at the data. Actually, let's just data FE. Let's just gather all two. So just the voltage measurements, and we could take the standard deviation, get a sense of how much that data is deviating. Not standard atmosphere data. I want standard. Standard, yeah. standard deviation right here. Close it. Close it. That's a pretty tight uh, data set. So 0 0.003, so basically plus or minus three microvolts. That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty nice <laughs> in terms of precision. Uh, so that's one way kind of we could deal and work with the data set. So let's grab another one. So we worked with an LMV file. Let's look with the text file. So this is from an XRD experiment, I believe. Um, so again, same procedure. I'm going to go, oops, I'm going to click the correct notebook. I had too many mathematic notebooks. When you have multiple mathematical notebooks, you want to make sure that you don't define variables in other notebooks because they carry over where you're working. So really be careful. Don't be like me have so many mathematical notebooks open at once because you can really mess up uh, your data set uh, by evaluating incorrect expressions. So 
one data set one file at a time, or you could use and set up a separate kernel for each notebook, but that's a little bit more advanced. I'll show you that later on. So let's look at the raw data for Chromium. And I believe that's an XRT experiment. Pop it in here, look at this data, and that is a large data set. Um, let's look at the dimensions. DSCR. So very, very long uh, data set here. So let's look again at our data, CR. Let's take the first 50 points and look at it as in table form. Here, not too bad. There's only kind of this two lines of code. Uh, so chromium, two theta in degrees, intensity in CBS. So let's take it from three onward, and we'll grab our data set. So I'm going to rename it just like we did last time. We're going to take it all the way to the end. So data CR equals this. I'm going to close my expression, and then this line plot data CR. XRD plot for chromium. Let's do range all. And that looks pretty uh, pretty standard for if you've done ENJ45 for a metal. So you see these kind of really sharp peaks, and really, other than that, it's kind of just Gaussian, these noise in this data set. So and that's due to the long range orientational and translational order of metals. So whether you like it or not, you're always going to get a, uh, <laughs> an, a material science lecture from me. So let's look at one last data set, but again, you can kind of see the procedure is fairly, um, fairly similar for what we're going to be working with here. So I want to look at uh, basically this Excel file, this chromium, or this aluminum data set. So let's go back into here. Again, I'm clicking the wrong one because there's too many. So our data L equals import. And then let's grab this guy, data. Again, lots of data set, lots of data here, lots of dimensions. So this time we have a little bit of, so you see this one here? Whenever you see this one, there's an extra parentheses being added. We don't really like to work with that. So what you want to do is type in flatten here, one, and that's going to clean up. Now we're into kind of a data set we can work with. So let's look at our data L, one to, let's just do 20. Let's look at that table form. So now we have this data set where we have multiple columns. So we have time, displacement, force, tensile strength, and tensile strength in percent. Um, so it shows those values. So we could again get rid of those that first two, that header. So let's grab, let's see if we grab it. A third again. Yeah, we're in our data set. So we could go from three to minus one. And let's grab data. Is that? Don't want to have it in table form. Let's grab here. Let's look at our data alone. Just what we know what we're working with. So if I want to grab just the time data, so I could say time is just going to be data, data AL. And I'm going to grab all rows in the first column. So you see that gives me all of my time data set. If I want to grab uh, stress, I'm going to create a stress strain curve. So if I want strain, strain, I could just do the same thing. Data L, all, minus one, last, all rows, last column. I can do stress is equal to data L, all rows again, and then the fourth column. Now I could create a stress strain curve. So I had to do a transpose. So I'm going to transpose my strain, my x axis. I want that to be a strain. Stress be y axis, transpose the data, it'll work out fine because they're all the same dimensions. There, this line plot, and we get a stress strain curve for aluminum. So that was very quick, but you can kind of see again where we're working with here. So you can transpose data sets, plot only certain sections. We could plot you know, if you want to do a force versus displacement, um, force versus time, you can plot all those different permutations. So, that's all, um, that's basically what we've done. So you finish Mathematica Module 1, um, importing data, do the assignment, let me know if you have any questions, and we'll get to kind of some more fun dynamic things with uh, Mathematica coming up soon uh, in the next module. So we're not done yet, uh, but this is the kind of the key lecture, how to work with this data set, plotting it. Uh, and if you can reproduce this, you're going to be fine in this course. So that's it. Have fun, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks. Bye.